What's going on guys? My name is Dan, I am the founder of Trained and I want to speak to you today about how to stay fit and get strong at home. I myself am looking at improving my weaknesses and maintaining my overall level of fitness during this time. I'm going to speak to you today about how you can do the exact same thing. Tip number one, this one is simply working out. In order to get better, in order to get fitter, you have to do something active, something physical, okay? Even though you might think that jumping around in the living room doing star jumps and doing some burpees on the floor might get you there, it helps to have a structured and tailored program specifically for you and your needs, okay? What I mean by that is you need to sit down and pick some movements that you feel like you really wanna dedicate your time to during this time, okay? Um, if you don't have a pull-up bar, you can't do pull-ups. If you don't have a heavy bench press, you can't go and include bench press in your movements that you want to improve. You have to be realistic and you have to govern the time towards those things that you put your mind to in order for them to improve. A simple example of this would be something like a press-up or more press-ups in a certain amount of time, like a minute. Um, it could be to improve your plank. It could be to... Um, it could be to complete a certain fitness test that you've made for yourself in a specific time or for an amount of reps. Um, so for example, if you did 10 press-ups, 10 squats, and 10 sit-ups, as many rounds as possible in 10 minutes, and that was your base fitness test, and then you went away and worked in those specific areas and then came back and retested, that would be a fantastic measure to see how much you've improved during this time. So picking a movement or a few movements that you're gonna dedicate time to and specifically try and improve is your first step. And then working out to try and achieve that is what you need to do. Another point that can help with this is making sure you're able to progress and track your progress every single week. So now would be a perfect opportunity to get a spreadsheet, even a little piece of paper and write down week one or W1, week two, week three, week four and then list your exercises on the left hand side going down and simply try and improve or beat the amount of reps you get every single week. That would be a very basic but very effective way to make sure that you're improving. If you can't measure it, it's unlikely you're gonna be able to track it and it's unlikely that you're gonna see the progress that you want. You have to track in order to improve. You can't score without a goal. I'm sure you've all heard that before, but it's absolutely true, and I would 100% recommend writing everything down that you do, specifically when it comes to your exercise. Okay, number two, the order of your exercises or the type of workouts that you're doing. Depending on what your goal is and what you've set yourself to achieve, your order of exercises and the type of workouts you do are gonna be fundamental in achieving this. For example, if you're focusing on increasing your plank time, and you do a lot of time, um, you do a lot of work in sit-ups and core exercises that are not a plank, it's unlikely that your plank is going to improve. In order to improve, you have to specify the movement and you kind of get better at what you practice. Um, it's called the theory of imposed demands. If you try something over and over again and you do it correctly, the likelihood is that you'll probably get better at it. Okay, so that's why it comes down to working with your individual needs and your individual equipment. If you don't have a pull-up bar, you can't train pull-ups, unfortunately, during this time, unless you went and bought one. The amount of band pull-downs or kind of dumbbell rows that you can do might help you maintain the muscle mass and maintain the strength that's already there, but it's unlikely to cross over into a specific movement like a pull-up or sit-ups to a plank, okay? The order of exercises that I would recommend are generally putting the hardest exercises first at the beginning of the workout. This is gonna mean that you're fresh for these exercises and you can apply maximum intensity and maximum effort in order to improve these. These, I would recommend, are the movements that you're specifically struggling with or your weaknesses. For me personally, it's my overhead pressing strength. I find it very difficult to press up with my shoulder strength being so limited, but it's relatively easy to press out into a bench press. Um, so I would put all of my vertical pressing movements first in my workout on something like an upper body day. Um, this can translate over not only to, to strength, but also to skill work. If you focus primarily on trying to do a single leg squat or a ring muscle up or, or pull up or any sort of gymnastic works, if you have the accessibility to do that, I would recommend putting those first to, to you know, so you can really focus 100% 
on the movement, the motor patterns, the strength, the speed, everything that you need in order to execute that movement perfectly. And then you can start to progress on with your workout to simpler movements as you start to tire. These simpler movements are generally higher in volume than the first ones. So a classic example of this for me personally would be a handstand press up for five sets of five reps. Relatively low volume, but relatively high intensity and high effort. Um, then I would progress into the movements I find easier. This could be something like a press up or a bench press with a dumbbell. It could be burpees, it could be plank, it could be core work. And the more I get through the workout, the more volume I start to accumulate. So I'll start with five reps on the handstand press up. I might do 10 press ups after that. I might do 20 mountain climbers, 50 jumping jacks and my movements would get higher in volume as I progress through the workout. But they get simpler and easier to perform each individual rep. One rep of a handstand press up is way harder than one rep of a jumping jack. So I'm gonna do more jumping jacks in order to level out the balance. I hope that makes sense. Actually focusing this time on improving your flexibility and range of motion in your weaker movements. Like I said, for me, my shoulders are a big weakness of mine and I generally think that's down to the decreased mobility and the difficulty to get into the range of motion because my shoulders are so tight. This is because I haven't focused the time on stretching them and really giving them the attention that they need in order to increase their range of motion and progress the movement. To improve this, I would focus on specific stretches that are directly linked to the exercise that you're trying to achieve. A classic one I see all the time is a bodyweight squat to simply sit down with your feet flat on the floor and your hip crease ideally passing below your knees and then standing straight back up again, maintaining a lumbar spine and a neutral curve um, in your back. This is something I see many people having problems with and I would focus on stretching in the position that you struggle in most. So take the squat for example. A lot of people struggle sitting at the bottom of the squat, but the top is easy, they can stand all day long. So focus on stretches that mimic the position at the bottom of the squat. So for example, a low lunge, where your leg at the front is in kind of a position that it would be in a squat, and focus on keeping the heel flat and the knee out during those stretches, they're gonna translate directly over when you next go into your squats. Spending a minimum of one minute on each side will really benefit you when it comes back to performing the full movement, okay? I see people all the time going through yoga flows, especially, this is common, where they kind of, put, they hold the stretch for 20 seconds and then they progress into the next one for 10 and then they go into another one for 30. And yeah, if you're working around the same joint, that might be good. And yoga is fantastic and it definitely gets people up and active. But if it's specifically mobility that you want to translate over into your strength and into fundamental movements like a squat and a press and a pull, you have to be holding that for one to two minutes on each side and really allowing yourself to relax into that stretch and get into the deeper muscle tissue. Point number four is diet. Protein specifically. When it comes to strength, when it comes to training and fitness, protein is a massive buzzword right now. And for good reason. Protein is basically the macronutrient that your body requires in order for it to repair and rebuild. After exercise, your body is in a state of damage um, and it needs to rebuild more so than if you weren't doing any exercise whatsoever. So upping your protein intake during this time or during a period of time where you exercise more is crucial for your recovery and then your sustained progress over time. Generally, for most people, without looking at their individual diets, it's very difficult to prescribe a certain macro target. Um, I would have to look into that more for you or you could get a nutritionist or a dietitian to look into that, that would be even better. I can offer my help, my assistance, but I'm not qualified when it comes to that. So I can only offer advice and not prescribe anything. However, me personally, I like to start with one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight when it comes to any sort of strength training regime. Then you can start to add in your carbs and your fat and all your micronutrients that go along with that. But for me personally, this is a fantastic place to start. Point five guys, the last one is literally just staying active. Moving around and staying mobile is absolutely gonna benefit you when it comes to not only your health, not only your performance, but also your strength training. 
If you take most of the movements that we've been talking about today, they are body weight uh, movements. They are gonna rely on the weight of your body and the strength relative to your body weight. So if you're up and active, if you're moving around and you're eating healthily, if your body weight manages to decrease during this time and you maintain or even improve that strength that you have, all the body weight movements are gonna feel easier for you. So that is my last tip on how to get stronger during this time with absolutely no equipment. Just a quick recap, working out, actually focusing on a specific movement or a set of specific movements and setting your mind to it, tracking progress. Number two, ordering your exercises to focus primarily on the most difficult one first. This means that you will be able to apply maximum intensity and maximum effort into the movements that you struggle with the most. Number three, spending time increasing the range of motion, stretching and mobilizing the joints and muscles around your weaker areas. For me, I mentioned this was my overhead press. I can spend some time mobilizing my shoulders and when I get back to the gym, I'll be able to train the correct range of motion with the correct movement pattern and this will make me stronger. Number four, diet and protein. I specifically start with one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight and I find this is a good place to start for me personally, although if you're interested in finding out more, I would recommend going to a licensed or accredited nutritionist. Lucky for you, we have one working right with us here on the trained program. His name is Luke Hall, he is a fantastic person and will be able to help you with all of your training dietary needs. If you have any questions at all, visit the website below and get in touch with either him or myself. And number five, guys, staying active and staying healthy. The more you move, the better you get. If it's body weight specific training that you're looking at improving, the lower your body weight and the possible increase of your strength will always make this easier for you. I hope you found this video interesting, guys. If you did, please like and subscribe down below and send me any questions you have in the comment section. I'll be absolutely happy to help with anything involved in this video. That's everything for me today. I'll see you in the next one.